Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film, film don't lie. lie. And guys, I'm going to tell you, the film really don't lie this week. Panthers coming off that big 35-27 to 27 win, setting up a showdown, win over the Jets, setting up a showdown with the New Orleans Saints for control of the NFC South. We have props. We have a helmet today. Yes, right. More importantly, we are breaking out I like it. the magnifying glass. Mike Rucker, you're first up because – what we're going to do is look back at that New New, New York Jets game because mistakes in the rearview mirror are larger than they appear. Any mistakes that we might have been made in that game, guess what? I'll put your thinking cap on because you're Drew Brees and you're Sean Payton. What have you looked at in that game film that you want to exploit against the Panthers' defense? Well, I, I definitely believe that there's some things that they feel like they're going to be able to try. Any time in, in NFL – or any sport, when you mess up on something, you're going to see it the next week, and you're going to be tested to see if you corrected those mistakes. And and there's a couple little things that were easy mistakes that um, that I saw. You know, that one in particular um, was uh, Bradbury. You know, the receiver was out wide, and and Bradbury had inside help with the safety, and the receiver comes off and just gives him a a subtle stutter that set Bradbury down just enough for that receiver to get in between and split him and the safety, and McCown threw a nice touch, uh, touchdown pass in the back of the end zone. You know, I think technique-wise, Bradbury could be a little bit stouter. I don't think that he necessarily has to uh, pause as much as he did on that stutter step because you want to keep all that in front of you since you have help. You do not want a receiver to be able to split you and your safety uh, on the inside, and he had enough wiggle room to get that touchdown. So I guarantee Breeze uh, will see that. Um, you know, we'll, later on in the show, we'll be able to talk about a play that Breeze took advantage of the Rams' defense and something similar uh, with the safety. You think he has a vintage magnifying glass like that? You know, these two have been together. I definitely call them vintage. There's yeah, only a couple. There's no doubt. A couple of quarterbacks and coaches that have been together for a long time. They're vintage. The Saints, I think <laughs> you can go up to New England. I would call them vintage. And we're getting there, right? We're getting there with Rivera and mm-hmm. Cam Newton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Starting to be together a long time. I got the magnifying glass. I want to take a closer look. That's a granny magnifying glass, just just in case funny folks are wondering. Probably get that one on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Let's get back to talk, all right? All 22. Let's talk about this defense and the Jets and what happened there. I think another play that was another big one, another touchdown in that game versus the Jets was against Kurt Coleman. And, um, you know, this is a situation where Josh McCown had some decent protection up front, but he felt kind of that clock was running out in his head and he needed to get out of that pocket, buy some extra time. So he does that, moves to the right. He's 38. He's experienced. He's got a lot of reps in the NFL. And I think You know, Kurt Coleman had good coverage downfield. What happened, though, is as that receiver cuts back towards the sideline, Coleman is on him, good coverage there, shuts that down, but Josh makes a little gesture with his hand, points to that receiver downfield, and it was almost in that split second when Kurt Coleman was breaking back with the receiver, doesn't really see that. He's looking in the backfield, looking to see where uh, McCown's going to go with it, that gave the receiver just enough time to get downfield. And this is something we've talked about. The, um, you know, Steve Wilkes calls it dirty eyes. Mm-hmm. And in this, this case, it, it was such a big play for the touchdown. Third quarter, a big momentum shift. It was actually the first time the Jets took the lead. And so this was an important play. So it's, it's not just dirty eyes to me. It was like filthy. It was <laughs> filthy. It was, it was, and uh, but I think that's a, an experienced thing that um, Kurt Coleman's going to bounce back from. And I'll tell you, you know, something we weren't really going to talk about today, but that sack fumble touchdown by Luke Keekley mm-hmm. that really began with Kurt Coleman and Steve Wilkes mm-hmm. calling the blitz. Coleman coming up well timed, uh, and in that situation, the tackle wasn't quite sure of what his responsibility was because it was well-timed right before the snap. He goes out to block Kirk Coleman instead of Wes Horton. Wes Horton gets that free release yeah. inside, blows up McCown. The rest is history with Thomas. I mean, uh, with Luke Keekley picking that ball up and getting the score. Well, that, that can be part of the remedy. remedy. I'll talk about that more in a second. One of the things I looked at and I always do with Drew Brees is, as I said, he 
takes advantage of every mistake in coverage. Slip, guys, eyes in the wrong place, you know, different kind of technique. I think one of the things that happened to the Panthers last year was guys were mixing man principles with zone tech, with zone calls and then mi mixing zone yeah. principles with man calls and where your eyes are. Uh, one of the plays I saw, Breeze hit Thomas 24-yarder right off the bat in that game against the Rams, which they lost 26-20. And the thing about it was he picked the most favorable matchup and sure enough, the guy he picked stumbled mm -hmm. in his in his pass set, defensive pass set, and he picked him apart and off to the races for 24 yards. Now, looking at that, also going to that film, what did the Rams do that the Panthers can do to slow Breeze down? Yeah, I, I saw the offensive line, especially in this game against the Rams, where I think – you know, that's one of our strong points is our, our defensive front seven and getting after the quarterback. And uh, there was a couple of plays in particular, but uh, you know, there was one where it was a four-man rush. And, and the Rams did a, a good job of mixing it up and not just sitting down and, and showing Breeze what they wanted to do. They had three down linemen. They had guys standing up, moving around, moving to safeties. And in this particular play, they rushed. They ended up rushing four when they looked like they were going to uh, blitz. And um, the left side, really, from center over to the tackle of the Saints, really just gave up pressure um, from the guard to the tackle. And the one thing that really stood out to me, even though they got the sack on this, was that Breeze had an opportunity to, to maybe take off and run. That's something Breeze does not want to do. He does not want to run. So as a defensive lineman, as a defensive player, if I know a quarterback's going to be there, I can open up my toolbox and bring out other, other techniques that I normally wouldn't do if I was playing a, a Michael Vick or a, a Cam Newton, somebody that's very mobile. Mm -hmm. um, you, your, your toolbox is limited. So I feel like this defensive front can really – apply the pressure. I think this is where the game is going to be won. Do we give Breeze enough time to throw, or do we keep him moving and uncomfortable in the pocket where he's got to move around where he does not want to, I think will be the key. Well, pick it up there because that was back-to-back -back plays. First you had the Donald sack, which you're talking mm -hmm. about, and then you had another sack by Robert Quinn. Mm -hmm. Were you able to project in that? Because when I saw that, in my mind I could see – Mario Addison, yep. Julius Peppers off the edge? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, I think this is the defense um, that can exploit that for sure against Breeze. You know, up front, they ran a TE on the inside and, you know, it was picked up kind of okay. They did let Aaron Donald come around late. But Robert Quinn was able to get up the field with great burst. To me, exactly, Mario Addison. That's who I see getting up the field. Does just a simple rip move, but it's the speed. And you look at that left tackle – you know, when you're facing some speed, a little bit of panic can set in, and you think you got to turn quicker than you need to. You kind of abandon your technique, and the left tackle really just turned his shoulders quickly. That gave him a shorter corner. And when you do that, when you combine some good speed like a Mario Addison can do with some poor technique, and they've had some issues at tackle now. They've got some guys banged up. So that's going to be a big thing to watch in this game coming up but Robert Quinn gets that sack causes the fumble they don't recover but the, the Saints get it yeah. back but it's still a big play a big play in that game and they were able to get him hit him and get him on the ground well before the Saints lost that game on Sunday to the LA Rams they were on an eight game winning streak and part of that is because this group of Saints they go marching in and they go marching with the run game and one thing you have seen from their film this season is They'll grind it out more than any Saints team that I can ever remember. I mean, probably going back to the days when you guys were playing against Deuce McAllister in that group. But uh, anyway, talk about what they do on the ground and what the Panthers have to do to stop it. Well, they will. They they will run the ball, and um, they can once they open you up with that pass. A lot of teams like to run the ball first and open up the pass. I believe the Saints with they with their offense, they're going to throw the ball and they're going to open it up for the run. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, know, the, the, you know, there's times where, um, you know, in particular it was a five-man box, um, and it was uh, the, the Rams were outnumbered. And a lot of times what you have to do if you're outnumbered or if you got five on five, you have to mix up your front, okay? If you got four down linemen and you have one 
linebacker in the box. You have to mix up your front. You have to run a game to muddy up that extra uh, gap that is left open. And the Rams didn't do that. And that allowed the, the Saints running back to, to really just break out and, and get up into the open. And so I think that that's one of the things that uh, the Saints are going to try to do is spread us because we are so good that if, if they can spread us, that he'll have a, uh, be able to look and see where their opening matchups are. Uh, but I, I think that this is going to be a really good game in the simple fact that both teams know what's on the line. This is a playoff game. And don't let anybody sugarcoat it for you, mm. KD. No sugarcoat. This is a straight-up <laughs> playoff game that is going to have implications down the road. It, it could be as simple as home field advantage, or it could be just staying hot in the month of December. Yeah, and I'll add on the play with, that Mike Rucker's talking about. You know, this is an offensive line, I think, that they're running the ball better because the offensive line is suited to run the ball. I feel like they're a better run-blocking offense than pass-blocking, especially with some the tackle injuries and some things that are going on there. And you look at that play you're talking about, there's a 74-yard run by Kamara, and it really is that center. Max Unger gets a great reach block on the nose tackle. Mm-hmm. And that sets up that A-gap first. That's the first thing Kamara's looking at is, okay, did that block get done? The next thing he's looking at is the tackle. Sees the tackle widening his guy. Next thing, Mm -hmm. he's hitting that hole because he knows that's the opportunity. And then Warford, their right guard, is able to get up on the linebacker. And when you get that trifecta of blocking, that's at least a five- to eight-yard run right there. That goes to the next level. All right, what are the receivers doing? Ted Ginn kind of bumps his guy, but it slows that guy down. He's the widest one out. But Michael Thomas on the, on the uh, DB that's right there in the middle, he's a bigger receiver, gets a great block. And when a receiver gets a block like that, that's when the big ones, that's when the knockout punches, that's when the home runs happen. He was able to do that. Kamar just used speed after that, got the touchdown for 74 yards. And that's something that the Panthers are going to have to see and say, look, these guys block well. We, they broke off a couple good runs against us in that week three game matchup against the Saints. How do we correct that and get better at that this next time around? Well, you said it, uh, both of you guys talk. I, I feel the intensity in this room is up. It's picked up. It's, it's playoff up. intensity, it's right, playoff yeah. intensity. Right, here right here in the radio Ooh. studio. But one of the things we're looking at, I mean, if the playoff started today, the Panthers would be the fifth seed. Guess where they would play? The Saints in New Orleans. Mm. Yeah. So you talk about playoffs. Playoffs? Yeah. It's playoffs. And uh, as you look down the schedule coming up, I mean, it it really is the league. The league has been the the schedule makers have been genius in setting up really a division schedule because uh, in the next five weeks, you know there are three games between these division foes. The rest of the games are within the NFC. Only one game sticking out there. Uh, New York Jets come in there and play the uh, Saints. That's the only game out of conference. So it's a lot. Fortunately, since 2011, the Panthers are 20 and 6 in December, second since Ron Rivera took over here with the Carolina Panthers. That bodes well as well. Well, we talked about all that stuff about New Orleans. What do the Panthers' offense have to do, real quickly, to uh, help in this big time game? I, I think my, my thing is stay on the field and control the run game. I think. Um, you know, history with the Saints is that their defense has been weak, and if we can stay on the field and we can get the running backs going and we can control the clock, the best defense in this game would be to keep Drew Brees on the sideline with his helmet in his hand. If you can do that, the odds of having a winning record in December are going to go up with him on the sideline. I, I got a quick stat there before you pick that up, Kevin. Because offensively, the only category where the Panthers beat the Saints pretty much is third down percentage. They have a higher third down percentage. Now, I know we're probably talking about a handful of plays, but it's always, Kevin, isn't it? Yep. First downs lead to touchdowns. To touchdowns. Wow. That's right. You know what, Crafty and I preach. Have. Preach. Now, for me, <laughs> for me, listen, it's about the turnovers. Because what I want to look at is the Week 3 matchup and how did that game fare and what was going on in that game that cost the Panthers the game. And to me, it was the three turnovers, New Orleans zero. And when you look at that, two of those turnovers, interceptions by Cam Newton, and you know one was early in the game, the score was only 7-6 to six in favor of the Saints. 
but it was a, a turnover deep in our territory. Four plays later, Bruce is, Breeze is able to capitalize and get the score to 14-6. And then later in the game in the fourth quarter, when you're hoping they can make that last-ditch run, because there's still seven minutes or so left in the game, another interception by Vaccaro, and that kind of ended all hopes. To me, that's how they got 14 points on this. That's why the score looked the way it did. I feel like you look at the stats and compare it, they were nearly identical in every category. Uh, both 50% on third downs, uh, the amount of times they ran it, the amount of times they threw it, the yardage, all that stuff looked the same. To me, it was the turnovers. And then last little thing to add, and we talked about this, listen, we gave up four sacks, yep. only got one. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about getting pressure on Breeze. That has to increase. And then our offensive line, which I think they've gotten better, will do a much better job this go-around, even though it is in the dome. All right, real quickly because we're running out of time. <laughs> Got to get you guys' best memory in the Dome. Bro? Uh, I think mine goes back to December 29th, 02. Uh, I don't know. Rodney Pete, PDP, <laughs> you know, he was still around. Everybody thinks that, you know, we, you go to Jake Dome. But we had Petey Pete, and we had a battle. I mean, we just came off, you know, a 1-15 a, a season. And so for us to come back and, and go 7-9 that year, we, we – Terry Cousins had a great game, a couple interceptions, a sack, and um, Mark Fields made a big play. No, you had a sack. I, had I, a, I remember I had a sack. that. It was, it was a long time ago. Uh, he, he's being up, humble you know? over here. He got over 50 or whatever it is. He can't remember them all. <laughs> so um, so that, that's going to be my highlight because that, I felt like, sent us into the offseason on a positive note that then led to the 03 season and the okay. magical season that okay. we had. Yeah, no, uh, that, that was a stepping stone right there. And nine goes into that 2003 season. We were playing them uh, down in the Dome. And let me tell you, it was – we stomped a mud hole in the New Orleans like Saints in yeah. terms of the running game. We won that game. And the score was – I don't even, I can't even remember what the score was. I'm looking at my notes. That the, doesn't the, matter. The internet, you know what? the internet was invented back then. Yeah. Okay, and let me tell you. <laughs> oh, 03, right. I do remember this. Number 48, Stephen Davis running for 178 yards, I think maybe two touchdowns. That, to me, all the attention's on Stephen Davis and what a great game he had. But us as O-line, and we went in that locker room on the road, and we got all that rushing yards. We just felt like we oh. owned it. Uh, just was a great way, I think, to um, to to really lead into this game. Let's have another performance Let's like that. Let's talk about that right offensive line opening up big old holes for Christian McCaffrey and Jonathan Stewart. Well, fortunately, I remember those two locker rooms <laughs> back in the day. I, I was there. The internet was invented to refresh my memory, but I was there, and I want to be there this Sunday for another. Big win over the New Orleans Saints. Thank you, guys. Well, for Panther fans, as always, if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it here on All 22 because the film don't lie. See you next time.